A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching. Hi, and welcome to this short briefing on the operational use of the FLS. In this video, we will address the following four questions. What is the FLS? How does it work? What is the advantage of the FLS compared to the final APP? And how do I perform an approach with the FLS? So, what is the FLS? FLS stands for FMS Landing System. FLS is not a type of approach, it is a guidance mode. On Airbus aircraft, FLS is the recommended guidance mode to fly all the non-precision approaches, with the exception of RMP-AR. FLS has been used on the A380 since 2006. It was then used also on the A350. And now it becomes standard on the A320 and A330 to replace the final APP mode for flying all straight non-precision approaches. How does the FLS work? The multi-mode receiver, MMR, computes a virtual FLS beam based on the following FMS data. The anchor point, the course of the final leg, and the slope of the final leg. The anchor point is the end point of the final leg. Usually, it is a runway threshold. Based on the aircraft position and barrow altitude, the MMR computes the aircraft deviation from the FLS beam, the log deviation, and the glide slope deviation. The FLS deviations are displayed with double magenta diamonds on the PFD with the same scales as ILS deviations. The flight guidance system uses the same control laws to guide the aircraft on the FLS virtual beams as it does on ILS beams. The FLS guidance captures and tracks the FLS lock and FLS glide slope virtual beams with the F lock and FGS modes. Now we have learned the basics of the FLS mode. Some Airbus aircraft are capable of both FLS and final APP modes for non-precision approaches. What is the advantage of the FLS compared to the final APP? The FLS uses an ILS lookalike concept while it enables flying a wide variety of non-precision approaches such as VOR, VORDME, NDB, NDB-DME, or NAV, GPS, but also ILS with glide slope out, lock only, and lock back course. Another important feature of the FLS is that it reduces the flight crew workload and therefore enhances safety. The FLS is automatically selected when the approach in the FMS is compatible with the FLS. You will be able to use the radar vectoring technique, just like for the ILS approaches. Finally, the FLS vertical guidance is automatically corrected with the temperature at destination when this temperature is below ISA. The FLS uses the temperature at destination inserted on the PERF approach page of the FMS. Now, let us see how you can perform an approach using the FLS. As already mentioned, the FLS guidance mode is automatically selected as a function of the approach selected in the FMS. Press the approach push button when cleared for approach 
and on the intercept trajectory for the final approach course. The F-lock arms and then engages. As soon as the F-lock captures the lateral beam, the FGS will be able to capture the final glide path. You can see that using the FLS is almost identical to flying an ILS. Let us see now how to fly ILS with glide slope out, but using the glide slope from the FLS. The lock on FGS modes are automatically selected when a lock only approach is selected. If no lock only approach is available in the FMS database, you will select an ILS approach and deselect the ILS glide slope on the RADNAV page. The lock on FGS modes are automatically selected for the approach. Press the approach push button when clear for approach and on the intercept trajectory for the final approach course. The flight guidance automatically follows the lock on FGS beams. As a conclusion, the FLS enables the flight crew to fly the majority of non-precision approaches like an ILS. The FLS enhances safety both by mitigating potential threats and by reducing the flight crew workload. I hope you have found this briefing interesting and I will see you around for the next one. A320 Mentor Channel. Thanks for watching.